The incident at Dyatlov Pass is a really puzzling case that many people think is one of the biggest mysteries ever. Even after more than 60 years, nobody can agree on what actually happened to those hikers. That's what makes it so fascinating. I always believed that nothing like that could ever occur again, but little did I know, it already did. Hi folks, I'm Johnny and welcome to The Oddest. The incident that occurred in Siberia in August of 1993 has some striking similarities to that of the Dyatlov Pass case back in 1959. This case is as frightening and creepy as it is mysterious, so let's go. If you've ever delved into the creepy side of YouTube or Reddit, you might have come across the Dyatlov Pass incident. It's the story of nine skilled hikers who died under strange circumstances in the Russian Ural Mountains. People have talked about it so much that it's not worth going into all the details again. When I first started this channel, the Dyatlov Pass incident was on my list, but it's been covered by so many, I'd be amazed if anyone watching this video had never heard of it. But there's another similar case that isn't as famous. It happened in the Kamardaban mountain range in southern Siberia's Buryatia region near Lake Baikal. This place is known for its rugged beauty and attracts many hikers. However, in 1993, six such hikers went into those mountains and never came back. This case remains a mystery and the only survivor hasn't spoken about the horrifying event since her initial statement given to the police back in 1993. Trying to unravel the truth of what happened is like solving a complicated puzzle with many of the pieces that may not even be relevant or trustworthy. Here's what we know so far, along with some theories. Ludmilla Korovina, a 41-year-old hiking instructor and respected survival expert, was highly regarded by her peers and her students. Her tough love approach earned her the reputation of a master in her field. Despite pushing her students to their limits, she was known as a great teacher who instilled confidence and imparted essential hiking skills. In the summer of 93, Ludmila planned a hiking trip to the Kamar Daban mountain range with six of her students. Since she was well versed in the area, which was a popular destination for tourists, it was considered a safe place to hike, particularly during the summer season. The students had undergone rigorous training with Ludmilla, and she shared a close bond with each and every one of them. The first student, 23-year-old Alexander Crissen, also called Sasha, held a special place in Ludmilla's heart, having known him for most of his life and she considered him like a son. The remaining five students were Tatiana Filipenko, who was 24 years old, Denis Shvachkin, who was 19, Valentina Valya Yutachenko, 17, Victoria Zalasova, 16, and Timur Bapanov, 15. On August 2nd, 1993, the group of seven arrived in the town of Marino, filled with excitement for their upcoming adventure into the mountain range. The weather forecast had promised clear skies and plenty of sunshine. Among the hikers, there were three groups exploring the area, including Ludmilla's group and another small group which was led by her daughter Natalia. They had planned each group's hiking route. Each group would take a different approach to the mountain, eventually meeting up on August 5th. But Ludmilla's group, well, they would never make it that far. All six students were eager to begin their hike, eager to showcase their skills as experienced hikers. Months of planning and anticipation had brought them close together as a group, making this journey even more meaningful. The initial two days of the hike went even better than expected. The group made remarkable progress. They reached Retranslator Peak faster than they ever thought. However, on August 4th, as they began their descent, the weather forecast, well, it proved to be less than accurate, and they were caught off guard by a sudden freak storm. The hikers' supplies got completely soaked from the rain, which made their journey slower due to the added weight. Since everyone was tired, Ludmilla decided to set up camp quickly in an exposed area, even though there were trees nearby for cover. They couldn't manage to start a fire that night, but they remained in good spirits. The next morning, they successfully built a fire and had breakfast together before setting off for the day. They expected to meet up with Natalia as they had progressed quickly up the mountain the day before. When Natalia and her group arrived at the meeting spot later on that day, Ludmilla and the group they were nowhere to be found. They decided to continue without her, assuming that the bad weather had maybe just caused them a delay. Little did they know that something much worse had happened, something 
beyond their imagination. Five days later, on August 10th, while a group of kayakers was gliding down a river at the base of the Kamar Daban Mountains, they noticed something unusual in the nearby trees. A lone girl stood there, watching them intently. Curious, the kayakers approached her, and some accounts mention that she appeared to have dried blood on her. Overwhelmed with distress, the girl tried to convey her story to the kayakers. Eventually, she revealed her identity as Valentina Yutachenko, and explained that she had been hiking with six other people. She then went on to describe the events just five days prior. Deeply disturbed by this revelation, the kayakers took Valia to the nearest police station, where an official report was then filed. However, it took several years before she could slowly recount the terrifying and bewildering story of what had happened to the other people on that mountain. So, according to Valia's account, the group started descending the mountain after having breakfast that morning. However, their journey took a horrifying turn within just a few minutes. Sasha, who was at the back of the group, suddenly began screaming in agony. When everyone turned to look, they saw him bleeding from his eyes and ears. He was frothing from his mouth, and he fell to the ground, convulsing violently, and then became motionless. Ludmilla rushed to his side while instructing the rest of the group just to keep moving. By the time that she had gotten to Sasha, he was already unresponsive and Ludmilla could not find a pulse. The remaining members of the group hadn't gone far when they heard Ludmilla's anguished cry. They hurried back to her only to witness her experiencing the same horrifying symptoms. Blood poured from her eyes and nose and froth formed around her mouth. She convulsed and collapsed on top of Sasha. Tatiana, who had reached Ludmilla first, soon succumbed as well. She clutched her throat, struggling to breathe, before crawling towards a nearby rock. She was clutching at her own head, as if something had gotten in there that she wanted out. This feeling grew so intense that she started to bash her own head against the rock repeatedly, until eventually she too would fall to the ground motionless. Victoria and Timur ran for their lives, but their escape was short-lived. Both collapsed whilst running, experiencing a similar fate. They vomited blood and clawed at their throats, tearing at their own clothes. In the span of just a few minutes, Valia watched three of her closest friends die right before her eyes. With only Dennis and herself remaining, they figured that whatever had affected the group might affect them, so they quickly continued down the hillside. That's when Valia noticed Dennis just stopped in his tracks. As she looked at him, wondering why has he stopped, he suddenly began convulsing and dropped to the ground. In under a minute, he was motionless, leaving Valentina terrified for her own life. In a desperate attempt to survive, she left her fallen friends behind, carrying only a tent and the clothes on her back as her meagre supplies. Valia sprinted down the mountain, determined to put as much distance as possible between herself and whatever this mysterious force was that seemingly just killed her friends. Finding a suitable spot under the sheltering trees, she quickly set up the tent for the night and fell into an exhausted sleep. When Valia woke up and realised that she had survived, she knew she had to gather supplies if she wanted to survive on her own in the wilderness. The only problem was that she had to go back to the place where her friends had tragically just lost their lives. With no other option, Valia mustered her courage and retraced her steps up that mountain. When she reached the site, she saw that her friends had not moved from where they had fallen. Knowing they were all gone, Valia swiftly gathered the supplies that she needed from their lifeless bodies and left. She followed the path down the mountain following the power lines above her head. For four long days, she followed these power lines down the mountain, clinging to the hope that someone would find her. Finally, she came across a river and decided to follow its course. By the end of her fourth day alone, a group of kayakers discovered her and then brought her to safety. Even though a report was made to the police, an official search wasn't initiated until August 24th. Valentina had not even been able to share her account of the events, which resulted in a two-day delay before helicopters were deployed to locate the bodies. The subsequent autopsy report revealed that they had all succumbed to hypothermia, except for Ludmila, who had suffered a heart attack. Additionally, they displayed signs of bruised lungs and malnutrition due to lack of proper nourishment. The deaths were officially classified as accidental. 
However, this ruling seemed peculiar when compared to Valier's testimony, which raised questions and gave rise to various theories surrounding this case. Let's have a look at some theories. Lots of folks have tried to figure out what happened in this mysterious incident, and it's no wonder because there's been a ton of investigation. People came up with different ideas to try and explain it all, ranging from scientific stuff to wild theories about aliens and the paranormal. I want to focus on the theories that seem more reasonable and practical. None of them can totally explain everything, but some come pretty close or connect with each other in some ways. Remember, these theories have pros and cons, and there's no solid scientific proof behind any of them. They are just ideas and speculations. One idea is that the hikers accidentally stumbled into a secret Russian military experiment in the Highlands, and that's how they died. The police and medical examiner might have lied about it, but there are some big problems with this theory. The place where the hikers were found and Valentina's survival just don't fit. During the summer, lots of tour groups go through the Kamar Daban Mountains, so it's weird to have a top secret experiment there when there are other hidden places. Also, the spot where the hikers died was in an open area, visible from the air and higher ground. It doesn't make sense for a secret operation to happen there and risk people finding out. And then there's Valentina. How did she survive? There was nowhere for her to escape or hide. Why didn't the military silence her as well? Why were only the others killed? It's all really puzzling. Many scientists have talked about the symptoms Valya mentioned, and they match those of dying from chemical weapons like nerve agents. Convulsions and mouth foaming are signs of a strong nerve toxin. The autopsy findings also support this cause of death. When nerve agents are involved, bruises on the lungs can show up and breathing becomes difficult. Nerve agents can even cause the heart to stop, just like what happened to Ludmilla. Some researchers think that Novichok gas might be the nerve agent responsible for killing the hikers. This gas was developed by Soviet Russia up until 1993, the same year of this tragedy. It's way deadlier than VX gas and sarin. It's believed to be one of the most lethal nerve agents ever created. There are reports of Novichok agents being tested near the Kamar Daban region where those hikers were. People exposed to this gas would have died very quickly. However, there are problems with these theories. First, Valentina survived, even though she was close to her friends who died, and she returned to the scene without suffering the same fate. Secondly, if the gas was used, who released it, since no one else was there? Was Valentina delusional? When someone goes through a traumatic event, they might remember things incorrectly, especially when recounting it much later, like Valya did. It's not her fault, but she might have added some extra details to the story. Researchers have shown that eyewitnesses' accounts can be so unreliable. So it's possible that the hikers really did pass away as described in the autopsy report. They probably died altogether on that mountain from the cold since they weren't well protected at all that night. Valia thinks that by making different choices, like going into the forest or wearing different clothes, that that's how she could have survived. But it's important to know that people who die from the cold often experience paradoxical undressing, where they take off their clothes before they pass away. That could explain why the hikers were found partially undressed. This is very reminiscent of the Dyatlov Pass incident. This idea not only makes sense on its own, but can also support other theories where some parts of Valia's account might be missing or slightly exaggerated. However, it's hard to tell how reliable each part of her story actually is. What about rainwater contamination? This idea suggests that maybe the hikers got poisoned by drinking contaminated water from the rain. There's a place called Lake Baikal above the mountains where toxic waste is dumped. So if that waste got washed down and into the water, the hikers could have accidentally swallowed deadly chemicals with their meal. Even if it was just one of those water-soluble nerve agents mentioned before, it could have contaminated the water. Valentina might have survived because she drank less water or she found a different source. The other hikers died later because these super strong toxins take a few minutes to work. It's like the nerve agent idea. The poison could have made them weak, leading to hypothermia, and they died before the poison fully kicked in. This kind of poison might not have shown up in any regular toxicology test. But here's the problem with this theory. If the water was really that dangerous, well, surely other people who visited that area should have been affected too not just this one isolated group. Maybe they ate something poisonous. 
This theory is super interesting. It's the only one where Valia might have been affected like the others who died, which explains why she seemed different from the rest. Ludmilla was good at finding edible stuff in nature, and she taught others to do the same. Maybe one of the hikers picked the wrong type of mushroom for breakfast, and that's where the problem started. As they kept walking after eating, the effects of the poisonous mushroom kicked in, making them hallucinate and feel very sick. It's weird, but some people hallucinate seeing others crying blood when they take a chemical called psilocybin. It's found in magic mushrooms, and if they took too much of it, it could lead to serious stuff like psychosis, convulsions, heart problems, and maybe even being in a coma. No matter if they were just tripping on mushrooms or, or if they were in a coma, they probably died because of the cold while being all messed up on mushrooms. Valentina might have survived if she had eaten fewer mushrooms, built up a tolerance, had some natural resistance, dressed warmer, or went to hide in the forest because she just got scared. This whole thing will always be a mystery. And it's really sad because the families might never know for sure what happened. Maybe in the future, when we have better technology, we'll find the answers. Until then, all we have is questions. I really hope they rest in peace. Thanks once again, folks, for hanging out with me during this video. I really honestly appreciate every single one of you. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing, or at the very least, just tap the thumbs up. And whilst you're down there, say hiya in the comments. Engagement really helps my channel to grow. Please stay safe out there, okay? Tell someone that you love them. And as always, keep smiling.